Hello everybody and welcome to another brand new edition of T Watches a Scary Movie. My name is T and of course we are talking scary movies. I appreciate you tuning in for another brand new episode. Remember, new episodes are guaranteed to go up every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. But as I put up extra reviews throughout the week, the best way to stay on top of all the reviews that I'm putting out is to get subscribed to my link tree. And you can do that by going to linktr.ee slash T scary movie if you get subscribed to my link tree not only does that give you access to the youtube page for the video versions of the show which you can hit subscribe there as well too to get alerts from there you can get access to all the podcasting platforms of your choice to listen to the audio only versions of the show to my letterbox page for my written reviews and yearly movie rankings and to my tiktok page for my short horror videos which usually includes me seeing movies early horror news things like that the best way to stay on top of all my my horror content y'all is to hit that subscribe button so make sure to do that so you can be alerted anytime i got new stuff coming out for you so what i have coming for you guys tonight well in anticipation of the first omen which opens up in theaters tomorrow april 4th i decided that i was going to go back and take a look at the omen series and what better way to do that than to start with the original 1976 film the omen so we're going to jump right on into that, folks. Now, if you've never seen this film before, The Omen tells the story of the Thorns, a couple currently living in London, raising their young five-year-old son, Damien. But as strange occurrences begin to happen around the Thorn household, as well as throughout the city of London, Robert Thorne begins to understand that his son, Damien, might very well and be the antichrist this is a movie that like a lot of you i got a chance to see bits and pieces of it as i was younger but i didn't actually see the original omen film until i was like well into my teenage years and it's kind of interesting because i got to see the second film damien and the third film the final conflict i saw those in full and had more familiarity with those than i did the original movie for quite a long time i knew of like the reverence that everybody had as or supposed to have for that original film. Like one of my favorite directors of all time, Richard Donner directed this film. If you don't know Richard Donner, come on y'all. Lethal Weapon, The Goonies, Superman, one of the best directors of all time did this. And it's kind of interesting looking back because when you think about names like Richard Donner, a lot of times you're really gonna associate those to like these high profile action or adventure films. But Richard Donner actually did a lot in the world of horror, interestingly enough. So just something, something very, very interesting to think of here. Something even more interesting to me though, is the fact that the writer, David Seltzer, not only wrote the original film, but he actually wrote the 2006 remake starring Lee Schreiber and Julia Stiles as well too. And you don't get that a lot, honestly. Like there's been times where we've had like the original writer involved with the remake, reboot, whatever that's being done with their film, you know, Wrong Turn comes to mind, but there's not that many out there. And the fact that, not that that's the point of this review, but the remake, while it's not shot for shot, is very much the same film, just updated for modern audiences. Something that I do actually feel is really really necessary for older films it's just a very interesting tidbit honestly so anyway we know the plot of the story here the fact is, is that robert thorne the head of the thorne household played by gregory peck is slowly finding out that his five-year-old son damien that he shares with his wife Catherine, played by lee Rimmick might be the antichrist might be the son of the devil and it opens up into all this intrigue and mystery and thrills of him having to confirm this information and then figure out what he's going to do once that information is given to him and one of the more interesting things i feel about the omen is that while a lot of people watch this film or have memories of this film and they'll like mention Damien in it and Damien's always this creepy little kid don't want to run afoul of Damien or anything to be honest Damien doesn't have that much of a presence in this film for a film and a franchise being completely centered around him honestly Damien has like the least presence in this out of all the films featuring this character but that also makes sense and a reason it's a reason why this movie does work so well is that 
we don't really jump into the evil kid craze, which The Omen absolutely would have been one of the first ones to do that. Not the first, but one of the first films to actually present that kind of horror genre with the evil kid coming and killing people. But that's not really what it is. Honestly, you could sit there and watch this and believe that, well, Damien's not really aware of what's going on. Like, to him, as these things are unfolding and people are dying in all these horrible ways throughout the film, to him, yeah, sure, there's those smiles and he might see it as being funny to him or humorous, but that doesn't really indicate, like, this nefarious, evil, inherent nature that this character is supposed to have. And that, of course, brings up the conflict that we as viewers and even Robert Thorne himself have in this film. As we learn who Damien really is and the evil, the terror, just the polite that this character is going to bring onto the world, it really brings the question up of whether or not Damien himself is responsible for what's going to end up happening. Like, is he the one that we should be holding accountable here for being the son of the devil and what his job is to take over the world and prepare it for the devil himself? Like, do we have to hold that against this young child who's clearly not doing any of that yet? And it's important to note that with the exception of Damien hitting his mother Catherine with his tricycle and sending her to the hospital, Damien himself is not really responsible for any of like the deaths that happened throughout this film. You know, it's it's kind of funny because it's almost like a Final Destination movie of sorts. And there's a lot being pulled from not only this film, but like the second and even third film as well that I feel Final Destination really capitalizes on. Whether it be the idea of premonitions of death to where we have the reporter Jennings played by the incomparable David Warner who finds these photos of people he's taken photos with close to Thorn and it indicating that they're going to meet their doom at one point or another, including himself, something that Final Destination very much uses. But not only that, the fact that so many of these deaths are set up the same way that a lot of deaths in Final Destination are, to where they're Rube Goldberg machines almost, to where wherever this character is at, one thing has to lead to another thing, which has to lead to another, which has to lead to another, to this death occurring. Nobody's just showing up and stabbing or shooting or a monster that's coming and killing all of these people. It's almost like all these accidents are happening in order to cover anybody taking the blame. And that really is it. Because there can't be suspicion placed onto Damien for any of this at all, because that would ruin the overall plan, even though he's just a five-year-old child. And that is part of what makes it a little bit more scarier than I think some people might give it credit for. Because I think if we did have like a Damien, oh, it's the devil child running around killing people, that takes away a sense of innocence to it. And the fact that maybe if you keep Damien happy, then this doesn't have to happen at that point. If you stay on Damien's good side, there's nothing wrong there because hell, his nanny Mrs. Baylock doesn't seem to catch any of the bad things that are going along, even though it's very clear Mrs. Baylock is very clearly evil in that. But anybody that's kind of backing like the like what Damien's side is going for doesn't really have much going wrong for them unless they're sacrificing themselves. Uh, and beyond that, it also has this message in there about how we deal with our faith and where we can actually find the help that we need. And it's it's not as direct as you might think for a film that has to do so much with Satan versus the power of good. There's not that much direct messaging in it, but it is kind of interesting to note that the priest that's involved with the initial deception and the reason that the Thorns end up having Damien in the first place is part of this conspiracy he's part of the reason why this has all happened in the first place and is looking for his own uh, uh his own ret uh not retribution but looking for uh resolution resolution to be resolved uh, absolved absolved he's looking for absolution for his actions at that point but he's really the only one that's doing it because a lot of characters are telling robert thorne to accept jesus as the only way to protect your wife and I don't know if that's enough for it because I'm sure that a number of God-fearing people throughout the Omen series are dispatched fairly, fairly easily, honestly. I don't know. But I will say this movie is incredibly effective, but my big problem with it and the reason why I enjoy the second and the third movies more is that I guess I prefer more of a physical presence. I enjoy more of a direct presence 
this character is the cause for what's going on. And the first Omen movie, it is scary because there should be a direct implication that Satan himself is the one that's controlling all of these terrible happenings throughout the film. But I think that the second and the third movie honestly just do it a little bit better because we're working off this story and this emotion that we already have. But now Damien's in a position where he's directly the cause of a lot of the events that go down and these various deaths affecting all of these characters. The cast in this is absolutely phenomenal. I think Gregory Peck does an amazing job in the role of Robert Thorne. It's kind of interesting to think that had he not taken this role, the lead character who plays um, uh, his brother in Damien would have taken this instead. Robert Mitchum? Robert Mitchum? Uh, I'd have to go back and check if I'm wrong. You know, crucify me, right? But uh, the cast does a great job. I think Lee Remick, especially as Catherine Thorne, is excellent in this film because it's very clear that as a mother's intuition would know, she knows something's wrong. She knows that something is off, but she doesn't want to necessarily confront that evil. And when the time does, when the time does come for her to confront that, she's the first person really calling it out and nobody takes her seriously. And there's some sexism in that as well, too, because... Even though the 2006 remake kind of like echoes those same sentiments, I have to feel if this story was being told in today's world, there'd be a bigger voice with this. Like, no, you're not listening to me of what's going on in my own house right now. Fire the housekeeper, get rid of the dog, and let's go see what the hell is going on with Damien right now. Because something's up, things are not normal around the house, and we need to fix that. And there's just some elements of it because most of what she's saying is dismissed or she needs to see a psychiatrist, whether it's her own suggestion or not, or the fact that she later becomes pregnant. There's all these things happening that just come from a standpoint of why can't we just take what she's saying to heart and kind of follow through with it. And it's ultimately what damns the thorns is that they really just can't get the communication out there to discuss the evil happenings that are in their house. The cast is phenomenal. You're going to get a lot of really interesting death scenes in this as well, too. So you're going to wet your whistle if you're looking for something brutal from this. But again, I do feel where it falters is that it's a little bit easier to get those actual physical scares in if you have something to manifest itself in, which Damien does in the two later sequels that come out after this. The Omen is a phenomenal, phenomenal film. And I'm very excited to see where the first Omen leads into it as from all reports, it leads right into this first movie. I have to imagine it has to do with the hospital that gets destroyed, that has the records that show that they killed the Thorns original kid to replace it with the son of a jackal, Damien. So I'm ready to see what that's like. And I'm going to be back with that, uh, with my re review for that later on this week. But tell me in the comment section, have you seen The Omen 2? Have you seen The Omen 3? I, you know, you might have seen The Omen 4. I haven't seen that one myself yet, even though I've owned it for years. But let me know in the comment section. Am I wrong here? Is The Omen the best of the franchise? Or are you like me to where you enjoy the second or even the third film just a little bit more? I want to hear about it. Tell me that in the comments, though, folks. But that's going to do it for me tonight. Thank you for tuning in. My name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared. Boy here is a big fan of Fangoria. So if you want to check out the world's best horror magazine that's out there, get a chance to get yourself your own subscription, which I just got my first one back in 2022, and I don't regret it for a second. But if you want your own Fangoria subscription or you like the Fangoria merchandise, then head over to the Fangoria shop and use my link if you want to save yourself some money, folks. That's an easy one to remember. Just go to shop.fangoria.com slash A-X-D-E-W. Again, that's shop.fangoria.com. Fangoria.com slash AXDEW or use my specific code AXDEW at checkout. You can save 20% off your entire order and that implies two uh, subscription and one-time orders as well. You don't want to miss out, folks, because with the magnitude of horror movies we've had released in the last few years and with what we have on the horizon, Fangoria is going to be your number one source for all that great juicy bloody information in the world of horror. So again, head to shop.fangoria.com.
Hey there, folks! Thanks for tuning in to T-Watch This Scary Movie. I appreciate you checking out another review or movie news, whether we're talking movies, TV shows, books, or games, whatever. It's all scary. Remember, you can check out new episodes every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on the YouTube page for video. That's youtube.com slash C slash Theron Reynolds Scary Movie. Again, youtube.com slash C slash Theron Reynolds Scary Movie. And you can check out the audio version on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Platforms, just search T Watch the Scary Movie or Twaza. Don't forget, my name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scary.